When Mark went to visit his grandmother's grave, he expected it to be a visit just like any other. But when he saw a little boy lying at a grave for hours on end, he knew he needed to help him. As he got closer to him, he heard the boy whisper something shocking. And when he spoke to him and learned more about his situation, he immediately called the police. This was a very dangerous situation, and he couldn't handle it on his own. Mark saw that hours later, the boy was still lying on the grave, and he looked like he hadn't moved. Why was he there? And why was he all alone? Mark carefully approached the boy to ask him something, but when he saw him from up close, he was shocked. The boy looked horrible. His clothes were dirty and torn, and he looked like he hadn't eaten in days. Mark's heart broke for him, and he knew he needed to help him. He did his best to earn the boy's trust, and when the boy finally told him what was going on, Mark was left speechless. This was a lot more serious than he had expected. They were in a dangerous situation, and he knew he needed to call the police. He just hoped that he could bring this boy to safety before it was too late. Why did Mark call the police? What had he discovered about the boy? And why were they in danger? It was a sunny autumn day, and Mark walked around the cemetery, making his way to his grandmother's grave. She had passed away a couple of years ago, but he still tried to visit her grave at least once a week. He loved her a lot, and they had always had a great relationship. He had brought some flowers to put on his grandma's grave like he usually did. He was going to put the flowers there, tell his grandma about his week, and then go home again. He didn't plan on staying long, but the day would go a lot differently than he expected. As he made his way to his grandma's resting place, he saw something interesting. The cemetery was still pretty empty, but Mark wasn't the only one there. There were some other people who had come to visit their loved one's graves, but one of them had caught his eye. At first, he thought he wasn't seeing it right, but as he got closer, he realized that it was exactly what he thought it was. It was strange, yes, but not completely inexplicable. He decided to just continue his way to his grandma, as that was what he had come for in the first place. You see, the thing Mark had seen was a little boy lying at a grave. It was a truly sad sight, but it didn't have to be weird. Maybe the boy had recently lost someone who was very dear to him, and he just missed them a lot. Mark thought about asking the boy if he was okay, but he soon changed his mind. The kid would probably be feeling really sad, and he didn't want to interrupt him or make him uncomfortable. And by the time he had arrived at his grandma's grave, he had already forgotten about the boy. But that was going to change soon. He cleaned the gravestone and placed the flowers right next to it. He sat on the ground and told his grandma about what was going on at his job, at home, in his marriage, and in his daughter's school. He liked telling her about recent events in his life, and he believed that she could hear everything that he told her, even though she couldn't respond. After about an hour, Mark finished his story. He sat beside the grave in silence for a few minutes, just living in the moment. And then he got up and said, See you next week, Grandma, to nobody in particular. He began his walk home, still completely unaware of what was going to happen next. He was not in a hurry, so he casually strolled through the cemetery. It was one of the biggest in his town, and it had beautiful flower fields going all through it. He took the same route back as he had taken on the way there, and he saw something that surprised him. The first time, he had not thought anything too weird of it, but now it was definitely not normal anymore. He stood still and looked at what was going on before him, thinking about whether he needed to do anything about it or not. He wasn't so sure. The little boy who he had seen lying on the grave earlier was still there, and he looked like he hadn't moved at all. As Mark looked at the kid, he couldn't help but feel a little bit concerned about him. Why was he still here? Mark still didn't want to approach him, but he didn't want to leave him alone either. So he sat on a bench close to the grave from where he could keep an eye on the kid. He was in no hurry and decided he would wait until someone came to pick him up. He still had no idea about the shocking discovery he would make. Another hour passed and the boy was still there. In fact, he hadn't even moved for this entire hour. Mark would have thought that the kid was unconscious if he hadn't heard him softly crying the entire time. He felt really sorry for him and couldn't help but wonder who this grave belonged to. But even if he strained his eyes, Mark couldn't read the inscription on the gravestone from where he was sitting. He realized it would be a little weird to approach the boy and read the inscription. And besides, it was not his intention to pry. He just wanted to make sure the boy was all right. 
Mark sat on the bench for two more hours and he was slowly starting to get cold. The boy still had not got up or even moved. Mark was at a loss of what to do. He felt like he needed to help the kid, but he didn't know how. However, he knew that he needed to do something. He decided to just approach the boy and ask him if he was okay and if anybody was coming to pick him up soon. He slowly walked toward the grave, not wanting to scare the boy when he heard something. The boy was talking to the grave, and what he said completely shocked Mark. He now knew for sure that he could not go home before this kid was safe and sound. But what should he do? He thought about calling the police, but he figured it would probably scare the boy, so he didn't make the call. At least, not yet. You see, he heard the boy say, Why did you leave me, Mommy? I'm all alone now. Mark couldn't believe this. He definitely needed to help him. He slowly walked towards him and asked him, Hey, kid, are you okay? And the boy looked up at him with teary eyes. At first, the boy said nothing. He looked really sad and scared, and Mark was shocked to see the condition he was in. He hadn't noticed any of it earlier, but now that he saw the boy from up close, he saw that he looked very pale and was wearing dirty and ripped clothes. The boy really did not look well. Mark didn't want to confront him about what he had heard him say to the grave because he looked so scared already. He thought of a better way to help him. Are you hungry? He asked the boy, and the boy silently nodded. Mark offered to get him a sandwich, and again, the boy nodded in silence. He still had not spoken a word to Mark, but luckily Mark was a patient guy. He told the boy to wait there and quickly walked over to a convenience store that was only a couple minutes away from the cemetery. There, he bought some sandwiches and a bottle of water. On the way back to the cemetery, he thought about what could be going on with this kid. A million theories crossed his mind, but soon enough, he would find out that none of them were actually true. When he returned, Mark was relieved to see that the boy was still there. He walked over to him and gave him the food and water he had gotten, and for the first time, the boy spoke to him. He said, thank you, and Mark smiled at him warmly. And what now, he thought to himself. Are you here all by yourself? Mark asked him, and the boy nodded again. Do you have any family left? Is anybody coming to pick you up? Mark asked again, but this time the boy did not nod, nor did he speak. He just did not react to his question at all. Mark regretted asking this question. He wanted to earn the boy's trust so he could help him, and this wasn't helping. In an attempt to connect, he told the kid about his late grandmother and pointed in the direction of her grave, and to his relief, it seemed to work. The boy looked at him and asked, What was your grandma's name? Mark answered that it was Sarah, and the boy told him, My mom's name is Jenna, as he pointed to the headstone in front of them. That's a beautiful name, Mark responded. But he still had so many questions. He surely must have some other family left, right? Why would they let him walk around like that in dirty and ripped clothes all by himself? Mark felt sorry for the boy, and the more time he spent with him, the more worried he became. The boy and his mother were homeless. Luckily, Mark could help him. As it turns out later, the boy and his mother were homeless, and they lived on the street together. Now that Jenna had passed away, the boy was left all alone and had nobody who could care for him. Luckily, Mark found him and called 911. The boy was placed in a foster family and eventually was adopted by a loving and caring family. He lived a happy and healthy life, and he never forgot about his mother.